Blessings, my brethren. I'm excited to be with you today to bring to you words from the word. In our last devotion, all I did was to take Peter's message and reiterate what Peter said and share with you the results of what Peter said. We're going to pick up right there today. Why am I excited? Because God forgive those who make mistakes and who come back to him and are converted and not only that he forgives, but he uses such persons for his honor and for his glory. And I believe that there are some folks out there today who have walked away from the Lord that God has been speaking to for some time to come back. And I believe that these devotions will encourage people to come on back and serve in the Lord. And if you are in a church, please welcome those people back home when they come back after they have repented after they have torn a wrong, after they have been converted, they can be used for the Lord. Faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I go back to Frederick Whitfield and his song entitled, Oh, How I Love the Savior's Name. And that third stanza, he said, it tells of one whose loving heart can feel my deepest woe, who in each sorrow bears a part that none can bear below. Oh, how I love the Savior's name. Oh, how I love the Savior's name. Oh, how I love the Savior's name, the sweetest name on earth. Yes, words from the word. Peter is back on track in full power, converted, conformed, and he is now commanding. He is preaching the word of God. Let's pick up a little bit from where we stopped last morning and come with me to Acts chapter number two. And I want to pick up from verse number 37 so that we can have a little time to share today. Acts chapter number two and verse number 37. Peter preached the word. He explained to them what they did. The word of God put them in their hearts. He said in verse 37, and when they heard this, watch this carefully, they were pricked in their hearts. Notice what the word of God does. The word of God pricks in the heart. And when they were pricked in their heart, when the word of God is preached, it's not just preached to pass on information. It's preached so that others would see their need and will do something about it. So they were pricked in their heart and they said unto Peter, who is Peter, the one that is preaching, and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? After hearing the message, okay, we are wrong, we are guilty, what shall we do? And Peter said unto them, repent. Repentance is a voluntary, sincere change of the mind of the sinner that causes him or her to turn away from his or her sin and turn to Jesus by faith, believing in him. He said, repent. After you have repented, he said, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of sin, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. In verse 39, he said, For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Watch this in verse 40. And with many other words did he testify, who he, Peter, and exhort, he is still preaching, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Now notice the response of the people in verse number 41. Then they that gladly received the word were baptized. What did they do first? They received the word. They received the message. They repented of their sins. After they repented of their sins, they were baptized. And watch what the scripture says. And the same there, there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Could you imagine one message, Peter's first message, 3,000 souls saved little bit uh, about little over a month ago he's out there weeping bitterly little over a month ago he denied the lord little over a month ago he's walking afar off he's with the wrong crowd all this now has changed he has found himself and he is with the lord and he's preaching the message and at the first invitation three thousand people were saved notice the attitude of those that were saved and they continued steadfastly and the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and breaking of bread and in prayer. Notice 
what the early church did. They continued. They did not just make a profession of faith and just say, okay, I'm saved now and continue living the old life. They continued steadfastly where? In the apostles' doctrine, what the apostles were teaching, the teachings of the apostles, they continue with that and fellowship. They were together. They had all things common. And in the breaking of bread, that's the Lord's Supper, and in prayer. That's what was going on in church. And notice the result now, again, in verse 43. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. In verse number 44, and all that believe were together. Notice the church. Many people ask, how comes that we are not seeing results like the New Testament church? The truth of the matter is, let's go and see what the New Testament church did and how they did it in order for them to get the results that they got. All that believe were together and they had all things common. Look at verse 45. They sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. So there were people who came from all over. There were those with need. They didn't have a way how to meet the needs of these people. Some of them, no doubt, did not even want to go back home after finding their new found faith. They continued daily, verse 46, with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house and did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. Now let me see how I can build on this. Back on track, in full power, converted, conformed, and commanded. It is amazing what God can do with a man who is truly converted. As I have said, it was little over a month before this scene that Peter denied the Lord and went away and wept bitterly. Jesus was crucified. He was buried and resurrected between what Peter did and what is happening here. Now, after the resurrection, the angel sent a message to the disciples and Peter in, Act, in Mark chapter 16, verse 7. After the resurrection, they went, realized that Jesus Christ was resurrected, and God gave the angel a message to send to these by the women. In verse 7 of Mark 16, he says, But go your way, speaking to the ladies, Tell his disciples, watch this carefully. I pay special attention to this. Tell his disciples and Peter. Now, Peter is a disciple. Why would he identify Peter? Why would he make sure that they tell Peter also? Because Peter had turned back on him. Peter had denied him. For some folks, they would have thought Peter is no use. He said, Tell the disciples and Peter, he said, that he goeth before you into Galilee, there shall he see him as he said unto you. So tell the, the team, and don't forget, make sure Peter get the message that Jesus wants to meet with them in Galilee. He was going ahead of them to Galilee, and there they must meet him. Now, if we go back to John chapter number 20, and read number one, down to about verse number 10. Here's what the scripture said. The first day of the week come at Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark, unto the sepulchre, and see it the stone taken away from the sepulchre. And she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciple, whom Jesus loved, and said unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre, and we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth and the other disciple and came to the sepulchre. So they both ran together, and the other disciple did outrun Peter and came forth first to the sepulchre. And he stooping down and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying, yet went he not in. Then cometh Simon Peter following him and went into the sepulchre and seeth the linen clothes lie and the napping that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also the other disciple, which came first to the sepulchre, and he saw and believed. For as yet they knew not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples 
went away again unto their own home. Now watch this. The women who came first to the tomb saw the, the stone removed from the tomb and the body gone. They went looking for Peter and the other disciples and told them someone stole the body. And Peter and the other one ran to the cemetery and noticed the napkin there, but the body was gone. Jesus had already arranged the meeting place where they should meet according to Mark chapter number 14 and verse number 28 and then John chapter 21 and onward. But in Mark 14 verse 28, the Bible said, and after that I am risen, watch this, I will go before you into Galilee. What I'm saying is the disciples knew or they heard what Jesus said to them. Now many people many times are in church they hear things and they do not remember. Sometimes they hear things and they do not comprehend. And here it is, they knew that if Jesus is not in the sepulcher, then he must be at Galilee because he said, there is where we are going to meet. I doubt seriously that these guys really believe that Jesus would be resurrected. I really doubt that they believe that. But here it is now that Jesus told them himself that he would be there. My time is up for today, but I am anxious to come back with you and share with you from this again. Please do not write out that person who may have made a mistake and not walk in with the Lord the way they walk with him before. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you. Thank you that you don't write us off. Thank you, dear God, that you give us a chance and you say if we confess, you're faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And it is proven here in this text. Now you have your way with us, dear God. May your people be excited to listen, be excited to understand, be excited to share, and God help them to understand that this is the gospel. The dead, burial, and resurrection is the gospel. And God, just like people were saved by hearing it when Peter preached, they can be saved today because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Save those that are lost and will call upon you today. Bless your people for sharing. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You are the important ones in this ministry because you are the ones who share it and get it to the ears of others. Because of you, it has left your island or your country and gone to another island or another country who will take it from there to another island and another country. Let's do this for Jesus. I love you. God bless you. Have a great day.